all over the world, nurses and doctors are on the front lines. But do we know here in South Africa what their experiences are? What are the conditions under which they must work? And has national government and other authorities responded to those concerns? Let's speak to Simon Lugwani, who is the president of DENOSA, that's the Democratic Nurses Union of South Africa. All right, Simon, we're reading all sorts of reports about the number of healthcare workers that are infected and affected by COVID. KwaZulu Natal is leading the packs, the pack with about 130. Four infections. What are you hearing? What is the situation? Nurses are feeling they are not being acknowledged by our government. In what way are you feeling not acknowledged by the government? And I want you to address the issue of PPEs. I know in the Eastern Cape, some nurses have spoken out about a shortage. Can you give us a sense of how bad that is? Uh, unfortunately, in the Eastern Cape, it had to take nurses and other health workers in that hospital to say they're not going to work unless they get PPE. Then the, the, the department from the minister and the MEC had to jump into that institution. Suddenly, PPE was delivered in that institution. Ordinarily, if we have a well-working system, it shouldn't be the case. Everything must be made available as per the promise by the department. Let's deal with something else that's quite uh, topical at the moment, the arrival of about 217 uh, physicians from Cuba. It's been widely welcomed, especially by uh, the Tripartite Alliance and other quarters of society. But there are some health workers who are saying, hold on, we've got some posts that are frozen in South Africa. We've got doctors in South Africa that are unemployed. How does does Denosa respond to this deployment? There was no need to have them at the current moment. It was too prematurely because we don't understand whether we have exactly exhausted internal capacity. Um, you know, with the interviews that we've been doing, we are learning that there's many doctors who are unemployed. Some are sitting home, some have opened private practice. They feel like their sin is just becoming, just by being South Africans and they're not given preference. And we, we think they ought to have been given preference as well. So um, that's how it happened. And again, the questions of whether is this coming at a cost to us or not, we then lay in, later learned that, in fact, it comes at a huge cost to our country. We really do appreciate the work that nurses and doctors are doing. Even hospital uh, workers in general, the clerks, the, the cleaners, everybody who's keeping the system going and putting their lives on the line for all of us. So we really do appreciate it. And thank you very much for the work that you're doing. I have a friend of mine, a colleague, and for some reason he turned, he tested positive. He was admitted. He even became um, critical in that he was unable to breathe until he was ventilated and assisted by um, uh, to breathe and, and survive. I'm just so glad that, you know, he pulled through the ventilator. And when I spoke to him, he was very grateful that he was assisted by a nurse. And he said, we must tell the word out there that he's a nurse but he says the nurses that took care of him are his heroes and they we just appreciate one another but we also thank the public the public in south africa is appreciating the work that nurses and other essential health workers are doing we really appreciate it it's it's much appreciated and thank you very much Rigi, and all the media for giving us platforms to vent our fears and our anxiety we're just expressing it because we are also human and we are not immune to the disease Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Stay well.